A reading from the hymn that we just sang. Savior of the nations, come. Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord shows such a birth. Not by human flesh and blood, by the Spirit of our God, was the Word of God made flesh, woman's offspring, pure and fresh. Then stepped forth the Lord of all from his pure and kingly hall, God of God, yet fully man, his heroic course began. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I absolutely love the beginning, middle, and end of that hymn. The hymn was originally written by Ambrose of Milan, St. Ambrose. And if you don't know who St. Ambrose is, it wouldn't be very surprising because he lived in 340. Not 1340, but 340. That's when he was born. In other words, 340 years after the resurrection of Christ, he was born. That's how close he was to the disciples and to the church, the beginning of the church. And he penned these words. Now think about that. How far away we are from the actual birth of Christ. Everyone says 2,000 years. 2,000 years, actually 2,018 to be precise, although we don't exactly know that that's true. But to be that close, only 340 years removed, wouldn't that be something? Martyrs were still being killed during that time. And so to pick up the pen and to write these words wasn't as simple as opening your Mac and typing. With every stroke of the pen, you are signing your death certificate. And so you better make sure that what you are writing down, you truly believe in your heart because you are literally putting your life on the line. And so what does he write? He doesn't write about how much he loves Jesus and how much Jesus needs, needs to be prayed, praised. He doesn't write necessarily one, one verse to be sang 427 times in a row. But rather, he writes these words. Pure, unadulterated, life on the line words. Savior of the nations come. Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. Now we'll stop right there just for one second. Those words, what do they mean? This season is a season of repentance. It's the beginning of the church year. The new church year, Advent. Marking where we begin as a church. And the church begins itself in need. Not in celebration. In deep need. As Christians, we begin our lives in deep need. That's why we baptize infants, as we talked about today. Because we're born in deep need. And so we begin this church year in deep need. And what is that need? For the Savior of the nations to come. For God to become man. And to rescue us from who we are by nature. I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed. And that I cannot free myself from my sinful condition. And yet we throw ourselves onto the mercy of a baby. 
trusting that this child would grow. Not of any mere birth, but one of true flesh and blood. One that we, each one of us in this room, experienced. And in that, that brings God so much closer to us as people. That he was actually born of flesh and blood. The, the divine Savior who created all things comes to us in flesh and blood. Not as a parlor game or as a trick, but rather to rescue his people from their sins. To take you away from your sins. To pardon you, forgive you, love you, defend you, protect you through every type of time of need. And he came in the form of a baby who seemingly could do none of those things. And isn't that the beautiful thing about it? Entrusted to St. Mary and St. Joseph. Entrusted to them that they would care for this child until the day came when they rebuked Jesus because they had lost him for three whole days and then returned to find Jesus in the temple as a child saying, do you not know that I have to be about my father's business? Why didn't you look in the temple at the first place? So not by human flesh and blood, but by the Spirit of our God was the Word of God made flesh. Woman's offspring, pure and fresh. So this birth of Christ was not merely of any man, but of the Holy Spirit. And that when St. Gabriel spoke to Mary, she was made with child. And not of any child, Christ. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Imagine, in her womb was the forgiveness of her sins. Now imagine this for yourselves, that in your heart is the same babe forgiving your sins. Not, not necessarily outside, but inside. Forgiving, living, renewing, bringing you to repentance and to absolution. Stirring up the Spirit that we would say, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And Jesus says, I will. I will. And let me take you along on that journey, that road which led to your salvation. It wasn't an easy road. No one ever said it was going to be. But that's why Advent begins with this reading from St. Luke. And you kind of wonder why. Well, Advent's the beginning of Christ as a baby. Why do we see him going into Jerusalem then, here in the first reading? And this is why. This was your journey to salvation. Christ, when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, he told his disciples to go and get a colt, a fold of a donkey, and to bring it to him. A beast of burden, an unclean animal, that the Savior of the nations would, would, would ride upon and would ride in to Jerusalem. That donkey was not merely obeying orders, but was carrying our Lord to the cross to die for you and for your forgiveness. And it continues. 
As he rode along, he being Jesus, they spread their cloaks on the road and drawing near already on the way down to the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples, which was a lot. Well, anytime you see multitude in scriptures, it doesn't mean just a few. It means a lot. We're crying out to him. Blessed is he. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And if you'll notice during the liturgy, when we sing that, the liturgical assistants and myself, we always bow our heads down and make the sign of the cross saying, Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord because as the king comes, he comes to die. He comes so that we would have the forgiveness of sins. And so again, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And then here is the really, really cool part. The Pharisees, also known as the ones that know it all, and they'll tell you, say, tell Jesus, the Son of God, rebuke your people. And Jesus says, there would be no point. There would be no point in rebuking them. Because even if they were silent, the very earth that I created would cry out saying, this is the Son of God. Here he, ha here he is. He has come to die and die he shall. Blessed is he. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who is nailed to the cross. And as that blood flowed, it was not the stones that cried out, but the stones that were covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And soon, that bloody stone would be rolled away and you would see Christ gone. And I seem to say this a lot, but it's when you need to, it's when you want to see God the most that He's missing. And that's the tomb. When you expect to see Jesus and you run to see Jesus and He's not there and you're not let down, that's when you know the faith is true. When He's not in the tomb. When He's here on the altar in flesh and blood. When He's in your heart calling you to repentance and to receive the absolution through the pastor, through me, who has no special power in and of myself, but just to say the words that Jesus has been given to say, has given to me to say. Or again, then stepped forth the Lord of all. And when they say step, and when St. Ambrose says step forth, he means being born from the birth canal. Step forth the Lord of all from His pure and kingly hall. God of God, yet fully man. His heroic course began. And that course begins not merely at His birth, but as He rode into Jerusalem on the colt to say these words, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And you know what? The marvel of all marvels is that the Father did. The Father did forgive you for what you don't, do not know that you do to the Lord. He forgives you for what you know that you do to the Lord. And He forgives you because of the next phrase. It is finished. Until he, ro he rose again and comes to the second advent. Here, beautifully veiled, is chalice and bread, soon to be Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness 
of your sins and for the salvation of your soul. In no way, in no way can I think of a better way to begin the year than with eating Christ's body and drinking His blood so that He is in me and I am in Him. And if this is true for me who eats it, so it is true for you who shall partake. And that babe will not merely be in the manger, but in your heart, forgiving you of all of your sins and leading you to everlasting life. Amen.